we went away for a while and uh, we actually went to <laughs> Jesus I was not gonna cry Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alin Marco, and in this video, I'm going to share my depression story. I have been wanting to make this video for years. I think I wrote a script for it like two years ago. It's obviously inspired by Tix. Um, Y'all know I love Tix. Uh, he's my favorite artist, and what he's doing for mental health awareness is just beautiful. It got me the motivation that I felt like I needed to actually make this video. And it's not a fun story. For such a long time, and still sometimes, I felt like there was so much wrong with me. Like, I was broken, and I wasn't good enough uh, at anything. <laughs> In 2011, I was subjected to a traumatic event. I had post-traumatic stress disorder. I have PTSD. First of all, I was in shock, and... For a long time, I just didn't feel anything. I don't remember crying that much. I don't remember that much at all. I was just like in my own mind. I, and it was, it was like a void. It was empty and just, I didn't feel anything. I remember the following period um, when I, got into my depression, um, I was just sitting in this blue couch in our school cafeteria for months. <laughs> I had a 100% absence from um, school because I wasn't in my classes and my friends would come to this cafeteria and visit me during recess and honestly i don't remember anything from from that i just i was in that couch and that's all i know and i have like pictures and stuff um with friends um that we took while sitting in that couch or like during recess and you know i was there <laughs> because i'm in the pictures but I don't remember any of it. The traumatic events happened in wintertime and so my PTSD was connected to wintertime and I live in Sweden so we have winter like six months of the year. It's cold and it's dark and it's snow everywhere and all of these things triggered my post-traumatic stress disorder. My depression got worse um, than it ever had been when fall came around and I started realizing that it's gonna be winter and I'm just gonna be stuck here. That is the first time in my life that I have ever been suicidal and uh, it is very, it is a very sensitive subject for a reason. I felt so stuck, I guess. It felt like every like I was living on a loop and things would never get better and now winter was coming and I was it was just gonna get worse and worse and worse. And so I uh, I told my dad that I need to get out of here or I'm going to kill myself. I know you won't want to read this, but you have to. I need to get out of here now. I won't make it through the winter. I'm not well and every day it's getting worse. I hate it here. I don't want to do this anymore. Dad, I can't do this anymore. I won't. From now on, there's just suffering. I love you and mom more than anything and I'm sorry. I don't want to die. I'm scared. I just don't know what to do. This has to end one way or another. Please help me. And my poor dad, he took me very seriously. <laughs> I'm so ashamed and so like sorry for 
for doing that to him and for saying those things to him. But yeah, I did and we went away for a while. We actually went to... <laughs> Jesus. I was not gonna cry. Um, we went on a vacation, the Canary Islands. And he got us into the best hotel I've ever been to. It had like a pool overlooking the ocean. Like it was a swim up pool with glass. So you could like swim and look at the ocean. It was incredible, so beautiful. And the food was incredible. And just, you know, the atmosphere and it being warm and me just getting to leave everything at home and you know just get out of there for a while i was in this extremely beautiful place and i just like i barely smiled like for photos i would force myself to smile but i just remember being so like numb So then fast forward like a year or two and I was in 8th grade I think. The only thing is I remember from that time is honestly like the traumatic things. During my um, depression I was dissociating a lot. I was so dissociated and like, like I said I just I wasn't really there. And so when something kind of triggers my PTSD, I dissociate like a lot. But one thing I do remember, and it was, I don't remember why, but I just had enough. You know, there was this like staircase outside our school, a fire escape, I think. Fire staircase escape, whatever it's called. And I was standing on it, um, and I called my mom and I was like, this is so strange because I think this is why I resonated so much uh, with Texas um, performance at Limo um, because I actually I called my mom I don't know if I was crying I think I was um, and I told her that I don't want to live but I don't want to die so I'm just gonna hurt myself and I explained to her that I was thinking about jumping off this fire escape and just to, to like break my legs so that I would get to leave and be in the hospital for a couple of months. I <laughs> again I feel so bad for saying these things to my parents but I, I'm also I'm happy I did. My mom got me to calm down and come home and we talked and then she tried to get me help. She tried to, uh, we tried to talk to the principal, we tried to go get help at this like clinic. Like if it hadn't been for my parents and my friends and like my surroundings at home, like I don't know what I would have done. Because I was so extremely miserable. But one way or another, um, time passed and I got out of school. I started high school. My mental health just deteriorated. And I started experiencing panic attacks. I could no longer go to the grocery store. I couldn't be in PE class because I could not move if people were looking, were looking at me. I could barely eat in front of other people. I preferred eating alone in the bathroom. And I just I just preferred to be alone most of the time. And uh, I was doing cognitive behavior therapy at this point. Um, and I was kind of like facing my fears and all of that. Ever since 2011, 
I was experiencing seasonal depression every single year for like eight years. And that meant pretty much hibernating all the time and isolating myself from friends and family. Um, things I loved stopped being enjoyable. I did not want to be awake. I just, like, every time I woke up, I just felt like, no, I don't want to do this. I just, I don't. And, you know, hygiene and eating and everything just feels so, so difficult that you just don't do it. And just not caring anymore. Like, I would skip school because I just did not care during my um, depressive periods. This has been one of the worst years in my life. And it's not because one specific incident or something that happened to me. It's because I had a relapse in every single one of my disorders. I have not been good to myself this year. And that was one of my New Year's resolutions. So I'm really disappointed in myself. But I feel strong enough now that I can take my life back. This is a journey for my life. This is honestly something we all should do because I don't think any of us love ourselves enough. That's really sad by the way. But I want to promise myself to always keep trying. Try my absolute best to not only take care of and love those around me, but myself as well. Hi. And that includes this young lady. <laughs> After that, I've been fine mentally. Now I feel so, I feel alive, you know? And I am excited about life and about the things I want to do. You know, about <laughs> finally maybe releasing music. I've always been interested in music and, you know, I like creating, no, scratch that. I love creating, I love writing and singing and making videos, obviously, and uh, now I'm getting into music production, so um, it might take a few years before I even let anyone hear anything I've done, but, um, you know, you gotta start somewhere, so. I, I feel like... We should just let ourselves be having all the emotions that we need to. It's the balling up of these emotions that make people go over the edge. It's like, we should all just accept them and accept that, you know, bad days are gonna come. Because I feel like when you're in it, you just, you feel so ashamed. And you feel like you don't want to be a burden on anyone. And you kind of cause the loneliness by isolating not just yourself, like your physical self, but isolating your feelings. No one understands what's going on in your mind. They only see the actions. They only see what you're doing. And so obviously if you're crying, people are gonna know that you're sad. But no one knows what your mental state is like unless you tell them. So I have been getting better at that. You know, if I'm having a day where I'm just not feeling it, I usually tell people now. And it is so liberating to just say that, no, I'm not in the mood. I'm having a bad day. And to have them understand and be like, yeah, tell me if you need anything and... I'll be there. I love life. I am not um, at a, in a bad place right now. And I wish you all the best of luck. Bye.